Hello everyone, welcome to your Medicare Monday. This is going to publish the first Monday in June. Happy June to everybody. Hope you were able to watch the videos last week. They came out a bit early on Friday, but if not, I'll leave them in the uh, description link below or in the email if you're uh, getting this through email. The two articles I wanted to cover today is about prior authorization and I talk a lot in my videos for Medicare about prior authorization and kind of the process that uh, Medicare Advantage companies make you go through. Now the state legislatures are working towards getting that process sped up and also kind of giving more guidelines or rules on how companies are to kind of give good behaving physicians and hospitals kind of a uh, a pass to kind of uh, this process so that they can give patient care quicker and uh, a lot of different companies insurance companies put prior authorization as one of their I guess you could call it value adds or competitive advantage because XYZ insurance company has a for lack of a better word more guidelines to cover before getting a specific service done now most physicians of course go through schooling to make sure that the process and the procedure that they're taking or putting the patient through is advantageous but some folks uh, some insurance companies or actually most insurance companies um, believe that they or the insurance company knows more um, this could be true could be false it, it is really uh, depending on the circumstance but what this kind of law is going in and I do apologize uh, state by state it's gonna differ because each state manages creates rules creates guidelines for each uh, insurance plan that is administered in the state so this might not be the same uh, for your state and it really does depend on whether you are in of course Hawaii California and Texas Nevada it, it does depend on the state that you're in and the laws that pass but this is good because finally like this case here in Michigan they are seeking to create more um, streamline processes for prior authorization so that's going to be something that is uh, hopefully helpful to everyone and I did a report a little bit talking about how the uh, inspector general created a report on Medicare Advantage companies and they found that 13% of prior authorizations were denied um, when they actually met the Medicare coverage guidelines which is why I always recommend people join a Medicare supplement plan instead of a Medicare Advantage plan if it is within your budget I also read something this is not going to be an article that I, I covered but it talked about how Medicare supplement companies are not they are not subsidized by the federal government whereas Medicare Advantage plans are subsidized by the federal government and the federal government has increased the baseline inflation for Medicare Advantage companies kind of reimbursement their subsidized amount they in increased it by 8.5 percent based on inflation but Medicare supplement companies have no subsidy so that 8.5 percent increase in kind of the baseline inflationary increase is going to come unfortunately from the uh, members of the plan so for those of you on a medicare supplement plan due to the high rate of inflation you may actually have a larger than average increase for medicare supplement uh, for your Medicare supplement plan now that's not to say you should go and cancel and join a Medicare Advantage plan definitely not um, the message here but the message here is that you know things are getting more expensive and your medical insurance is not immune to said uh, expenditure or said inflationary pressures um, next article 
the lack of transparency is still keeping many from seeking care. Now, this is something that I only recently kind of became uh, aware of as I have needed care in the past. You know, I have, I suffer, for those of you who don't know, I suffer from chronic migraines. Um, I have a pretty uh, strong prevalence of uh, heart disease. Um, my dad passed away of congestive heart failure at age 58. My brother had congestive heart failure when he was in his early 30s, my younger brother. And on my mom's side of the family, they all have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and uh, kidney problems. So, I had a uh, stint where right now I'm trying to get into contact with my primary care doctor, but I couldn't, so I'm trying to get my chronic medications refilled. I only have um, chronic medications for my chronic migraines, but to get that refilled, I was considering going to an urgent care, but I didn't because I couldn't find my copay for an urgent care, and I wasn't sure if my deductible was going to take into effect, and my deductible is um, $750, which is, is quite a lot. Sorry, that's the opening bell. Um, the stock market is open now. Uh, so it is really early. Um, so I was thinking, you know, what should I do? So I, I just made a video visit because I knew that was, you know, a $30 copay versus an unknown copay. So this article here is very important and also very current as lots of these articles that I bring to you guys are very current things happening in my life that are being revealed to me that I can kind of bring light to you just in case you're wondering or if you're running into these things because we all participate in our broken healthcare system. So one of the things that they found here that more than 40%, that's almost half of everybody decided to not go into all oh, my alerts are coming in I better shut that off all my stock market alerts are coming up so but what that basically means for everyone is that we're not doing a good job at illustrating our benefits and that's not unfortunately something that even I can help with because a lot of the benefits that I'm looking for obviously I chose the plan that I enrolled in and it wasn't really clear Medicare, though, they have very, very good guidelines. And the Medicare supplement programs that I put everyone on also has very clear cut rules on how much things cost, right? So if you're on a Medicare supplement plan G, as in girl, your only uh, expenditure for Medicare covered services is that Part B annual deductible, $233. Other than that, you know, Part A and Part B services after that will be at no copay or no core insurance to you. If you're on a Medicare plan N, you have up to a $20 copay after you've met the deductible for Part B services, $20 copay at a doctor's office, or a $50 copay at the emergency room. So it, it's very clear cut, easy to understand. You know, so long as the, the service is covered by Medicare, you'll be fine. On the Medicare Advantage side, you know, so long as they bill your insurance and the insurance uh, covers it, then you will be uh, responsible for the copay that is listed on the summary of benefits, which is quite comprehensive. For people who are still not yet on Medicare, our summary of benefits looks pretty basic almost too basic the summary of benefits for medicare advantage plans are typically around four to five pages i mean they list i believe 26 different um copays and coinsurances whereas mine pretty much just has like five different copays and you know it doesn't list urgent care it doesn't really list emergency room especially if so like for me i have an hmo so it doesn't really list like if i go to an out of network urgent care or an out of network ER like it's covered but that doesn't mean it's free it does it does cost money and I would much rather go to an in network emergency room or urgent care especially if it's gonna be the difference between me paying like a hundred fifty dollars and a thousand five hundred dollars right there and th those could be the differences as I have experience with these you know plans out here so I I really do feel um, 
for everyone who's participating again in our broken healthcare system. So with that said, I hope you guys are having a great week. It is summer, temperature will be rising, stay hydrated, be smart, you know, stay active, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.